So, engineering qualifications and accreditations, are they overrated? I'll take you through that now. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new to this channel, my name is Zanele. And for those of you that have been part of the tribe and have been part of this journey for the past couple of weeks, thank you so much for all your support and your subscriptions. If you haven't subscribed, press that red button below. Remember to also press that bell button to give you notifications every time I upload new content. So for those of you guys that haven't checked out any of my previous videos, do have a look out. So I share content around engineering, around career development, and around leadership. So when I started out this channel, I had a number of challenges, especially when I was looking for content around the GCC, so the Government Certificate of Competency, and actually figured that um, social media, YouTube, with it being one of the biggest search engines, it gives the platform for us to share information and be able to have insights and inf information at the tips of our, of our fingertips, basically. So basically what I'm trying to do is wherever there are insights that I'm looking to put out there in the World Wide Web, and have any individual who's looking for this information, actually just look it up on the net and find that resource and find that support and help without having to struggle through it and i feel that this can be a ripple effect and we can ultimately grow an army of future leaders and an army of whether you're in engineering you're in finances you're in supply chain or logistics whether you're looking to grow with your leadership journey even if you're looking to become an entrepreneur there are pieces of insights that we can all learn from one another to make our continent a great powerhouse I've been having interesting conversations with a couple of you guys. I actually had a conversation recently with one of the ladies I work with, right? And this was around engineering accreditations. So if you haven't checked out any of my previous videos, you know that I speak a bit about the PR Eng, I speak around the GCC. I've even touched a bit around masters in engineering. I know there've been some requests to have further content on that and I will definitely upload content on that. Um, and really the conversation was around, should I really continue to pursue a GCC or a PR Eng or even a masters in engineering? Cause it's so overrated. The world is shifting towards business. The world is shifting towards economics. And we know there's a trend in digitization. And really if you're wanting to get ahead, you must have your own business and understand business and so on and so forth. So I'm all for that and I understand 100%. But you guys know, especially those of you guys that have been following my videos, that I do have a firm belief that a lot of us have different callings. Yes, you definitely need entrepreneurship and those who have that pioneering spirit and looking to drive for change. But you're also needing to have your specialists to be able to develop your country, have the technical skills and mindsets and have the technical aptitude and outlook so that we can have progress and development and see growth through that channel as well. So we can't take away from the benefits of being accredited as an engineer, whether it is through your PR Eng, through your GCC, even if you're going through the route of academia and you're looking to get your master's and your doctoral degrees, there are benefits in obtaining those accreditations. One is peer recognition. You definitely do get a heightened level of respect as an individual who's competent and knows their subject matter. You do get uh, an insight and a view into an understanding in your specialist field. So you do become a subject matter expert and that go-to person. It does open up channels for compensation and the potential to earn more is increased. Take away from the titles that come with being a PR age or being a GMR 2.1 or even having your master's in engineering and even your PhDs. One of the key ones, which is probably one of the most important for me, is that level of responsibility that is given to the individual, that is given to your GMR 2.1 or your professional engineer or that person who's seen as the senior engineer on site or your specialist in looking after the safety of people. Yes, we work with machines machines, but ultimately it's there to ensure that the people operating those machines do not get injured in any way. Everything else, in my view, is a nice to have. You will get high efficiencies, you will get increased productivity, you will improve on your costs and ultimately have systems that run your business. But fundamentals, especially for engineers, is in solving problems and making life easier for human beings. If you're asking me, are accreditations overrated? Not yet. So we still have a long way to go, not only in South Africa, but as an African continent. If you look at the latest GDP, gross domestic products of the different countries in the world, if you look at us versus Europe and Asia, North and South America, looking at the top 10, not even top 10, top 50, Africa doesn't feature anywhere, especially in the 2018 rankings. You find that your Switzerland, your Ireland, your USA's are amongst the top 10s. Your top 50, there is not even one African country that is on the top 50 
15th in the GDP ranking. Some of you guys might know, but for those of you that don't, GDP or gross domestic product is the monetary value of those goods or services that are being produced in a, in a specific country. If you're nominal ratio per capita, then you know that we've got a long way to go. And number one, building up the skills and capability and building the right infrastructure in African continent and African countries for us to be able to manufacture the wealth of resources that we've got and be able to sell and trade those off and be a producing powerhouse, not only for our country or our continent, but also for the rest of the world as well. I'll leave a link below to the survey and the study done by the IMF, the International Monetary Fund. I'll also leave a link below to the definitions of the GCC, the PRNG, and even where you can have the top 10 institutions for you to do your, your master's of engineering studies. I have done videos in the past where I've spoken about the best universities in South Africa from a study and analysis that was done. So I will leave a link below or even check it out in some of my previous videos as well. There is value. There's definitely value in pursuing your accreditation, but you need to know for yourself, what is your end goal? What is your vision? What is your ambition? Also looking at the strengths that you have, what are you bringing to the table? Don't only get a qualification to have a tick box exercise because you'll find yourself in a position where you're miserable and not making the right change. You won't be making the right impact because you're not passionate about what it is that you're doing. So don't go for a qualification just for a tick box exercise. Be clear on whether it drives your passion, it's for monetary compensation, or if it's something that you're needing to do to gain a certain skill set and exposure for you to move on to the next step. So check out my next videos where I'll speak a lot more around pursuing an MBA. I know there are individuals who are still reluctant in taking that first step. I'll share a couple of tips on insights and how you can start taking that first step and certain things to look out for. I'll also discuss on the strategies that you can use with your essays for application, also with the GMAT or the SHL assessments and tests, and how you can set yourself up for further success. Comment below on whether you feel engineering accreditations are overrated. Remember to live your best life, learn as you grow, and lead for change. Shout.